thank him for Jesus and Muhammad. Peace be upon these worthy servants of Almighty God, Allah. It is unthinkable that we could live in a nation today that resembles the nations before us that were given a prophet and a messenger and think that in such a great nation that is wicked, that is in rebellion to God, that denies the people justice, that God would not find his way into this nation and raise from the people in this nation a messenger. We thank Allah for his intervention in our affairs in the person of Master Far Muhammad the great Mahdi who came among us and found one among us to be his messenger Messiah and the man that he found from among us the black man of America was the honorable Elijah Muhammad <laughs> told us the truth. He warned us of the time that we are living in. That's right. He brought us a powerful revelation from God. And he said before he departed that one day you would turn on your televisions and turn on your radio and you will say, Elijah Muhammad sure told me the truth. We bear witness more now than when he was among us. That he told us nothing but the truth. So help us God. <laughs> I am so grateful to Allah for his mercy, the extension of his mercy to us by giving to us a man who is an extension of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and this man that I will attempt to represent to you today is a divine leader, teacher, guide, and a warner to the nations of the earth. The man that I speak of, you already know. You already have heard from him. Some on many occasions. You know that he's not an ordinary man, but an extraordinary man. You know that he's not just some black leader. Know that you can't put him in the category or company of the great ones that have come before us, though that's not bad company to be in. But he's distinguished from all of our great leaders of past and present because he's divine. That's right. That's right. That does not make others undivine, but divine in that he has been anointed by God. Yes, when you hear him, you know that the man could not and cannot speak what he speaks with such conviction, with such boldness except that he really, really knows God. And he really knows the time 
that we are living in. I thank Allah for this wonderful human being that God has given to us. And if we would just listen and obey, our condition would be greatly and significantly improved. It's not hearing the word, but it's doing the word that makes all the difference. I thank Allah for the honorable Minister Lewis Parker. Yes, I greet you with the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. To my brother, student minister Corey Muhammad, to the laboring staff and believers of Muhammad Mosque number 36, I thank you so much for the great honor of being in your presence and giving me a chance to get out of Chicago, yes, even if it's for a day. <laughs> I'm honored to be in your presence, and I pray that the words that we lift from God will find a firm resting place in your hearts, in your minds, because we are in serious, serious trouble. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. That's right. If we don't make a change soon, many will perish. Oh, yes, sir. We are living at the end of Satan's world. We're living at the end of the world of rebellion. We're living at the end of the white man's world. This is a world that was prophesied to come into existence, but as it was prophesied to come into existence, its doom and destruction was also prophesied. Yes, sir. And the problem with us is that we don't know the time that we are living in. For there is a time and a season for every activity under the sun. Yes, Solomon says in the book of Ecclesiastes, there's a time to be born and a time to die. There's a time to love and a time to hate. There's a time for war and a time for peace. There's a time to sow and a time to reap. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what has been planted. A time to build and a time to tear down. The question is, what time are we living in? Yes, and sir. ignorance of the time can cause you to lose your life. Yes, sir. All of what Solomon said is happening as we speak. There is a tearing down and a building up going on. There is a planting and there is the plucking up of what has been planted. We are in a time of war. Yes, yes, sir. yes, sir. And as our beloved minister has said, it is a war on two fronts where we are concerned. War denotes struggle. War denotes a struggle between two opposing powers. Shall the righteous coexist with the unrighteous? Shall the believers coexist with the disbelievers? Shall the children of darkness coexist with the children of the light? We're living in a time 
of separation. And whether you know it or not, our future and survival depends on our separation, not our further integration into a world. So I would like to scatter some seeds this morning. I would like to sow the good seed that is the word of God. And this good seed that is the word of God will save your life, improve your condition, and like a seed that is sown into the earth, it needs water and sunshine in order for it to germinate. In order for the word of God to take life in us, to take root in us, to germinate in us, we must have faith in that word. And faith and love will unleash the power that is in the word of God. And as that word of God is planted in the darkness of our mind, yet it will germinate. It will take root. But it won't be long before it sends a shoot up. And you will become a new man and a new woman. And we will become a new people. Right. 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 Plant the good seeds of righteousness and you will harvest a crop of love. Plow up the hard ground of your hearts. For now is the time to seek the Lord that he may come and shower righteousness upon you. You have plowed wickedness. You have reaped injustice. You have eaten the fruit of lies because you have trusted in your ways. God says in the Bible, my ways are not your ways. Neither are my thoughts your thoughts. Mine are from above, while yours are from beneath. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the ends thereof are the ways of death. If the blind lead the blind, they both fall in a ditch. I humbly submit to you that our leadership is blind. Both black and white. Both yellow and red. The leadership of our, on our planet, they are blind. And they are blind due to their lust for power. They are intoxicated and drunk with power and wealth. And the masses of the people are like sheep. They're easily led in the wrong direction. Very hard to lead in the right direction. Our leadership is taking us down a way that seemeth right, but the ends thereof is the ways of death. Let me just be straight up with you, with us. You don't have a future in the white man's world. Yes, right. yeah. come on, come on. 
the founding fathers of this nation had no intent when they brought our forefathers from Africa into America to make you an equal shareholder. They had no intent to share the wealth with you and me. It wasn't in their heart to do right by us. We're seeking justice from a people that don't have it in their heart. We scratch. We crawl. We claw. We walk. We stand. We protest. But yet, no justice comes down. From that mountain called the Department of Justice. Simple justice would relieve the pain and calm the breath of our mothers and fathers and families that have lost loved ones to demons. You gotta call it what it is. You're looking for some devil out here in space. And the devil is putting hell on you every day. You're looking for God out here, but denying him in yourself. We're gonna talk today. We won't be long, but we will be strong. How many of you saw that movie? Oh, many didn't see it. It's quite an entertaining movie. Telling a very good story about our condition. See, we don't realize that we have been deceived. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How many of you read the Bible or are familiar with the Bible? Oh, good. Is this part of the Bible belt? Now let's open up our Bible. The world in which we live is not the world of God. This is not God's world. This is the world of the enemy of God. Satan's world. And Satan's world is a world of death, misery, grief, loss, confusion, trouble, violence, war, bloodshed. That's the world in which we live. And isn't it interesting that in Eastern religions, there is no talk about doom and destruction. But when you come into Western religion, there is this talk and prophecy of doom and destruction. All religions talk about an afterlife. All religions talk about heaven or paradise. Or in Islam, the hereafter. What is it talking about? The afterlife has nothing to do with your physical life being resurrected after it physically expires. Nobody has come back from the grave to tell the living of any life beyond the grave. Talk who sold us that lie? I could believe it and accept it if one actually died, got buried in the earth, got up out of the grave, shook off his grave clothes, 
and said, hey, <laughs> keep holding on, baby. It's real good on the other side. You're going to see Booker T, Harriet Tubman, Prince, too. <laughs> such place. I'll give you 30 seconds to think about it. Even the kingdom of heaven. Do you recall in the Bible when they asked the master teacher where is the kingdom? Where did he say? Did he say is up there somewhere beyond the sun, moon, and the stars? He said, the kingdom of heaven is Ooh. It's within you. Prophet Muhammad comes 600 years after Jesus, and he says something so profound. He said, heaven lies at the foot of the Lord. Wow. It's not that it's at your heel, sister. <laughs> but what you bring forth from the womb has the potential to bring a condition of heaven on earth depending upon how that woman relates to God. You're the key to bringing in that which is called the kingdom of heaven. It starts, it starts with a special child that's born from a special mother. The scripture calls the mother Mary and the child Jesus. Right. Yeah. Then Isaiah 9 and 6 reads, For unto us a child is born, and a son is given, and he shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, a prince of peace and an everlasting father and of the increase of his government. Not this. Of his government of peace. There shall be no end. You're looking in the wrong place. Washington is never going to do right by us. Justice. None of these governments will survive the war of Armageddon. None of these governments are fit as stewards of the divine life force that is in the human being. None of these governments are cultivating the people properly that you may develop and grow to your fullest potential. This world keeps the masses of the people illiterate so that they can use the masses as tools and slaves. You can't free yourself and your people from the white man's education. The white man's education is only to make you a better slave. What has 
education done for the masses of our people. That education is not designed for you to take that knowledge to cultivate and develop your own community and your own people. Otherwise, if we had gotten a proper education, we would not be suffering today, begging for jobs that we should be able to give ourselves. makes you a, a cogwheel in the system of the white man. That's why you don't know how to do anything independent of the system. I can challenge everyone that's in this audience that has received a master's, a PhD, Make something new. You only have a degree that would afford you or allow you to be qualified to work for somebody else, but not for you to work for yourself. Otherwise, we would have factories. Otherwise, we would not be like we are begging our 400 year old enemy to educate us, don't close down our schools. Everybody else that comes into this country, they seem to carve out a way for themselves. You don't see the Polish, the Italians, the Arabs, the Koreans, the Chinese, the Mexicans, talk to me. You don't ever see them marching in Washington asking for jobs and justice. We've been here longer than all of them. And you mean to tell me 460 years later, we're still marching, we're still protesting, we're still asking? For what we should be able to give to ourselves, what have we been deprived of that others have? That we are in this terrible and miserable condition. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. A child is born, a son is given. Seed of Abraham. 
and Jesus said, if you were the seed of Abraham, you would do the works of Abraham. That's right. As it is, you seek to kill a man who has told you the truth. Then they came back. We are not born of fornication. See, they charge Jesus with being born on fornication. We are the children of God. This is the same talk today. We are all children of God. Can't we all get along? No, we're not all children. That's right. That's right. We all are here because of God. He set up the law of procreation. He permitted the life that is here, black, brown, red, yellow, white. That is of God's will. But all are not the children of God. You've got two groups of people on the planet. Children of darkness that belong to Satan and the devil and the children of light. And there is a war between the children of light and the children of darkness. Which one shall prevail? Y'all with me? Yes, sir. Oh, boy. Again, I got all of these notes, and I'm not going according to script. But I pray that our Lord will bless me. Yes, sir. To put over what is being given to me. Jesus is telling them, you're not the seed of Abraham. You're not the children of God because if you were of God, you would accept me for I proceeded forth from God or from the Father. Then he had to say, look, 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 let me just tell you who you are. In other words, let me tell you that I know you. I recognize you. You are of your father. So you stop all this our father. You are of your father. My father is God Almighty. Your father is the devil. You are of your father. He was a liar and a murderer from the very beginning. So those that Jesus met 2,000 years ago are here today. They claim to be who you are. <laughs> They're guilty of um, what is it called today?
identity theft. They claim to be the real children of Israel. Who are the real children of Israel? This is what has gotten your brother into trouble with that community. Because he said, you are not the real children of Israel. The real children of Israel is black people in America. They ridicule him and speak all manner of evil against him. And their wicked and evil lies are so effective, it has you looking at your brother all twisted. Oh, he's a hater. Oh, he's an American. Oh, he hates white people. He's an anti-Semite. Who told you that? Did you discover that on your own or did, or did somebody tell you that? Your perception has been shaped by fake news. Trump is right. Fake news. This whole thing is designed to shape your thinking. You're in a matrix. It's designed to make you see what it wants you to see, hear what it wants you to hear, taste what you want, what it wants you to taste. They're in the business of mind control. They shape the behavior of our children through television, through music, through art, through education. I know these Muslims, they're paranoid. They're conspiracy theorists. You better wake up. We're not conspiracy theorists. We know that it is a real conspiracy, but none dare call. After nearly 500 years of our condition, you going to tell me that this is not by design to keep black people in a subjugated position? And everything that you do to qualify yourself in the white man's world isn't enough even when we put a president in their white house, it still is not enough. You still a nigga no matter how high you climb on the total pole of white society. I don't Get real intimidated and feel threatened when 
when somebody else comes in and appears to be more qualified for the position that we're holding. Oh, we, we messed up. You know we messed up. And no matter what we do, it never seems to be enough. That's right. Let me ask you something. Consider this scripture. If you belong to the world, this is Jesus talking. I'm standing with the Jesus. Every Muslim loves Jesus. Every Muslim believes in Jesus. teaches us about Jesus the Messiah. A whole chapter is devoted to the mother of Jesus, Maria Mary. And in that Quran, Allah says that he made uh, Mary the mother of Jesus and her son a sign to the nations. A sign of who? A sign of what? You don't know who you are. You're so valuable. That's right. And the enemy is busy keeping you blind to your identity, blind to your future. Because he knows it is written that the slave would become the master in the house where he was sold in bondage. He knows that Barack Obama represented your future. You're not just going to be the ruler of America. You are the stone that the builders have rejected.
thought Jesus was black before Elijah Muhammad. Your grandparents had a white Jesus over their mantle, high face, a blue eye, pale face, Caucasian, streaky hair. Mick Jagger looking at me. Right. 
They can't mention the likeness of Caucasian people. That's right. Abraham, when you you watch a movie, he's white. Right. That's right. That's right. Noah, white. Right. Right. Moses, white. Right. That's right. Aaron, white. Right. Joseph, white. Right. David, white. Right. Solomon, white. Right. Let's keep it going. Joel, Jonah, yeah. all of them, white. Right. Now it comes to the Son of God. He white too. And if he's white, then daddy got to be white too. Let me confuse your thinking. Ain't no such thing as any human child coming into the world by the agency of some spook or spirit. If Jesus, and Jesus is a human being, his father is human too. That's right. That's why the scripture says that he's born, he's the seed of Jesse. Or from the house of Jesse. According to the flesh. But declare the son of God according to the spirit. Now everybody looking for this Christ. But they won't come to the ghetto to find The real children of Israel. That is the seed of Abraham. Is found in the book of Genesis. No of a surety, Abraham, God is talking. That thy seed will be a stranger in a land not of their own. And they will be slaves to another for 400 years. Good part. Oh, this is a, this is a good one. I got to the good part. But we got good news to share. But after that time, I, God is talking, will come. Uh oh. God is coming to the seed of Abraham that are slaves to another in a strange land, not of their own. That means this people is so special that God reserves his manifestation in the fullness of himself for a people who are slaves to another who are considered no people. Stay with the Bible. On that day, all I shall see him. God is not a spook. If God were a spook and you and I were made in his image and likeness, then why aren't you and I spooks in spirit? I know it's difficult. Yes, You've been had. You've been tricked. Yeah. Yeah. In the book of Peter, it talks about perilous times coming, and in that, he says, You have the form of godliness, but denying the power therein. See? The form is the outer appearance of a thing. So we have the form of godliness because you're made in the image and the likeness of your father. So Elijah Muhammad said every time you look, every time he looks at a black man or a black woman, he's looking at God. That's right. That's right. That's right. Children of who? All right then. 
so that all eyes shall see him. Then it's a human being. Who is the supreme being. And if he's the supreme being, that means he's in the uppermost place of all beings. And he differs from all other beings in that he has a superior knowledge, a superior wisdom, a superior understanding. Yes. Yes. God is prophesied as coming. Now let me just qualify a little more that God is a man. Adam and Eve. Adam was in the garden. Right? When he disobeyed God, what did he do? He hid himself. You know when you and I do something, that we know we're not supposed to do. We hide. We're in chain to sense of guilt. But Adam is in that garden and he knew that he disobeyed the commands of God, right? So he and his wife are hiding from the book says the presence of the Lord in the garden. Evidently, Adam knew that God had eyes. You don't hide from no spirit. No spook. You hide from some physical reality. Adam heard the footsteps of the Lord in the garden. And when Adam Or was hiding himself, but he covered himself with a fig leaf. And then God is talking to him. Come on, man. Come on. God is a man. Yes, sir. Always has been. Always will be. Yes, sir. That's the biggest trick. And because you don't know the greater of he that is in you than the he that is in the world. But God has come to awaken you to the knowledge of who you are. Ye are God's children of the most high God. I will come. I will judge that nation which they shall serve. And afterward, they shall come out. Key word, hold that word. Come out. Get out, come out. Of her. And they will go back to their fathers. In peace. And they will go and they will have great sustenance. God is reserving this people. For himself. Oh, this is so magnificent. And when he comes, he, and the Bible tells us, God visited Egypt. See, the seed of Abraham are a people who were taken into bondage. They're made slaves for another. Were we not stolen? Yes, sir. Were we not kidnapped? Yes, sir. Were we not taken from our land and our people and brought over here into a strange land? Have we not been living with a strange people? Have we not been made slaves to another? And how long have you been here? 462 years. But what you don't know is God made his promise already. 62 years ago and a little before that. And he came. And he 
raise one from among us that is styled in the scriptures as the first begotten of the dead. You know how we know we the dead? See, because the dead don't do nothing. They have eyes, but they cannot see. They have ears, but they cannot hear. They have a tongue, but they don't speak. The dead are numb. The dead, the dead are told. The dead are insensitive. Look at our communities. We don't have any sensitivity and compassion for each other. We're numb, we are cold. We're cold hearted. The greatest crime that is being committed today is not what white folks are doing to us. Sure, I'm the Paul, I'm outraged, upset to see our young people. Like our young brother recently down in Texas, Jordan, another victim of police brutality. But let me ask you, which is worse? A white man killing a black man or a black man killing his own brother? We can protest, we can petition, we can organize marches to demand justice from them, but we are doing the worst by our killing one another, our abuse and our mistreatment of our women. How in the hell can a people demand respect from others when they do not respect themselves? On the force 
and many of them are involved in the very crimes that they are accusing and charging others with. As I close, and get my own hands. You, 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 me, us, black folk, have been chosen by God. You're running like Jonah from your assignment, your responsibility, your designation. And we'll never be at peace. We will never have happiness and joy until you do the will of God. You can take it or leave it. See, the winds are blowing now. Yes, yes. On the dry bone. Yes, sir. You know that picture of the dry bones on the battle? They heard the word. They praised God, they shouted, agreed, but there was no life in them. Every good teacher, every good preacher, every man that has come before us, we've applauded them. Yeah! But we ain't done nothing for very little. So that son of man that was placed in the midst of the dry bones in the valley. He prophesied unto the bones as he was directed by God. And then uh, he went back to God. And God told him, prophesy unto the winds. When the winds blew on the dry bones, the book says, they stood up and exceedingly great army of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, the world of the enemy is going down. That's right. Yes, it is. Trump is the right man That's right. to uh, dismantle. That's the term my teacher uses. Not just the right house, the right world. Let go of Jesus' hand. 
back <laughs> coming into the knowledge of this great man he is born into the world to bring peace to bring in the kingdom of God to execute the will of his father but he also is born into the world to destroy the peace Break he comes into the world to end Satan and his world. So he's described as a lamb in the book of Revelations and the beast that is in power. John the Revelator has who is able to make war with the beast. Mystery Babylon is revealed. 
This is it. This is America. She has fallen. The nations of the earth, they're not afraid of her. She can't threaten them. She can't bully them. Little North Korea over there. Just egging her off. What are you going to do? Come on, man. Kim Jong Un. What you want to do? Come on, man. Huh? You want to fight the big Kong? Let's fight. He like my man Al Pacino and Scarface. Come on, come on, come on. Say hello to my little friend. And he got a little friend that's got a nuclear weapon. Notice how America deals with nations that got nuclear weapons. She don't bully them. She threatens them and everything. Because once you got what I got. I can kill you, but you can kill me too. The question is, who's first? But we're going to die. The nations are headed to war. Our minister has warned us. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad warned us that America was going to war. Now I'm wrapping this up for sure. The children of Israel in the Bible that were in Egypt, they had to make an exodus. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Moses and Aaron had performed all the miracles before their very eyes. But it was only after the plagues and the judgment. And you know this is talking about Negroes, blacks, niggas, I'm not saying it in an offensive way, no. Strike that from the record. Because they were murmuring and complaining all along. But once the plagues came in, they said, okay, the God of Moses is God. Because the God of Moses had to prove that he was more powerful than the Pharaoh that they were under. And I'm telling you that Allah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. God Almighty, yes, sir. that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad represented yes, to us. Now you say, well, I don't know no Allah. Well, the people in Egypt did not know Jehovah. Yeah. <laughs> 
You see the terrific storms? Yeah. You see the tornado? You ain't seen nothing yet. It's all going to increase. And you're going to come to know Elijah Muhammad and Louis Farrakhan. Is our modern day Moses and Man? Treatment, yes, the coldness, yes, 
crucified. Don't tell me you can't get rid of the habits that you and I have adopted. Don't tell me that you and I take those words out of your vocabulary. I'm saying. and we will survive. If black people came together anywhere in America, this, there was nothing that we could not have if we wanted it. The unity of 40 million of us in America would guarantee our survival. In fact, the unity of one million, the minister said, of us in America would guarantee survival for all of our people. To achieve survival, however, there are things that each of us must sacrifice. That's right. There is no way to survive unless we come into unity and there's no way to have unity unless we give up the things that keep us from having unity. That's right. That's right. Survival starts with you and me. Don't look at the government plans. Look to yourself and ask yourself, am I as an individual willing to struggle to exert myself to the fullest to ensure that I outlast what is coming upon this world. If you make the commitment and say yes, then there's a job that you and I have to do right now as an individual. We must also understand that eating the wrong foods and even eating too much of the best foods is not good for our health if we want to survive. These foods, that's why we gotta go get some land, brothers and sisters. They're chilling us through the food, killing us through the water, killing us through GMO, killing us with all of these toxins and poisons. We gotta feed ourselves. And get our mouths, as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, out of the white man's kitchen. During the plague in Europe, the Jews survived. And many of the ignorant, seeing the Jews surviving the plague, begin to kill the Jews, thinking that they had brought the plague about. But they later found out that what caused the Jews to survive was their diet. They were eating day old bread or bread that had mold in it. And in the mold was penicillin. And that penicillin caused them to survive that plague. Isn't that something? Yeah. See? Was it Sandra and Misha and a bad Negro? <laughs> that was thrown in the furnace! But one like the Son of Man was among them. Thank you. I'm close. You don't know that there's one like the Son of Man that's among us. And no matter what the enemy does, he cannot destroy you and me. It's impossible. It's impossible. God is with you. In order for us to survive, we have to give up the things that keep us from uniting. We have to give up stealing if we want to survive. We have to give up lying if we want to survive. But any time we lie, we undermine our own character to God. No matter how bad the situation seems, if we tell the truth, we begin building our character. And when we build character, we create trust in each other. We build confidence in each other. How can any institution that we build survive if we don't have any trust or confidence in one another? And none of us can have confidence in a liar. We must strive to make our word our bond. That is a
principle of survival. Can we have unity if we are gossiping about each other? Can we create brotherhood? Spying on one another? Backbiting one another? Once we are prone to gossip and doing dirty things behind each other's backs, the enemy of our unity sees this. He has his electronic devices on us night and day. He's monitoring all of our conversations on social media. He's monitoring through the NSA every text message that is sent. Once he finds us weak in character, the minister said, he uses this to destroy our organizations and discredit us. So each one of us has to police ourselves. The program of survival starts with you and me. If we would just stop doing the negative things that we do to each other, we would be 50% on the road to survive. We've got to get rid of the envy and the jealousy. We have to get rid of that hatred that we have for each other. God did not wrong you and give it to another. God has put himself in you. You just have to cultivate the gift and the talent that God has given to you. to one self concept because it is one self or a poor concept self concept that breeds or produces envy and jealousy in the heart you got to embrace you you got to accept you you got to validate you you got to love the Lord God with all your heart mind soul and strength and love Or the second law is like it unto the first. Love your brother. As you are. And the problem is you don't love self enough, so you're insecure. And you take your insecurities into relationships. You, dear sister, are so critical. Don't look to no man to validate you. Your beautiful self. Don't look for a man to approve you. You approve yourself, validate yourself, and accept yourself in the sight of God. And you make us to respect you by how you respect yourself. One thousand feet. I see the runway. Brothers and sisters, 